Thank you, Brother Darrell. And singers, we appreciate your work. I invite you this morning to the 62nd Psalm. This psalm has the nickname, The Only Psalm. Not that there are not 149 other psalms, but Psalm 62, The Only Psalm. My soul waits in silence for God only. From him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail a man that you may murder him? All of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence. They have counseled only to thrust him down from his high position. They delight in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. My soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be shaken. O oh God, my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. O oh people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Men of low degree are only vanity and men of rank are a lie. In the balances they go up, they are all to, they are together lighter than breath. Do not trust in oppression and do not vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God and loving kindness is yours, O Lord, for you recompense a man according to his work. The 62nd Psalm was nicknamed the only Psalm. The little adverb only occurs six times in the Hebrew text. And this is clearly seen in the New American Standard Version of the Bible that I just read to you. The authorized version of the scriptures begins with King David talking to his own soul. My soul wait only upon God. Others have rendered this verse saying, My soul be silent before God. Be calm. Your enemies have surrounded you. Be calm. Your troubles are constant and seemingly never cease. Be calm. Rest my soul in God. Be calm. Your enemies are strong. Yes, they are, but our God is almighty. Your troubles are worrisome, but our God is greater than any of your troubles. As the Apostle Paul has said, He has delivered us from so great a death, and He doth deliver in whom we trust that He will deliver us. Do not be like the wicked who are so troubled that they cannot rest. Be calm. Cast your burden on the Lord. Commit your path to the way of the Lord and rest in Him with a sure and certain confidence. My soul, make God the only object in my life. My soul, wait only upon God. Make God the object of my desires. How many people today are living for a career? How many are living for fame and reputation? How many take pleasure only in the riches of this world? to maintain respectability in the eyes of others. Is that your only desire? Make God your one object in life, and all these things shall be added to you. To a Christian, to a faithful Christian, godliness with contentment is great gain. There's no loss in being a Christian. So my soul wait only upon God. Say, I love to serve him. I love to spread his kingdom. I love to advance his interests, to tell the story of his gospel, to increase the number of his children. My soul wait only upon God. My soul do not be anxious about the troubles and trials of life. Rather, your only care is to please God. Perhaps, 
the most miserable people in the world are those who are so careful that they worry about everything. They're so anxious about what will happen tomorrow that they cannot enjoy the blessings of today. David says to his soul, My soul, be careful about nothing except God. As the New Testament admonishes us, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. Oh, there are many people that pick their way through this world, afraid to put one foot down before the other, fearing the danger. My soul, wait only upon the Lord. Turn your eye to Jesus to walk his narrow way of life. Walk with confidence and say, though I could tread on hell itself in the next step, yet if it be the will of God that I should go there, it would be heaven to me. There is nothing like the faith that can leave our care with God having no thought except how can I please God in this situation? Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor they gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Say not what we shall eat, what we shall drink, or wherewithal what we shall be clothed. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows what that you need all of these things before you even ask. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My soul, let this be my care to serve God and wait only on Him. Is that what David is talking about in Psalm 62? Regardless of the circumstances of the day, as bad as they could possibly be, my soul wait only upon the Lord. The little word selah, an unpronounced word, instructing the musicians to take a breath, to pause as they sang this psalm. It occurs twice. And it occurs at the end of a thought in verse 4 as well as verse 8, thereby dividing the psalm into three sections. And each of these three sections in this only psalm contains this little adverb, only. Only my soul finds rest in God. He only is my rock and my salvation. He only is my fortress. Find rest in God only. While facing certain calamity, the psalmist had found out that only God could be trusting. During times of uncertainty, only God should be our desire. When we need rest, it can only be found in God. Everything else and everybody else proves to be untrustworthy, especially when we need them the most. Psalm 62 commemorates one of the greatest heartbreaks of David's life, the rebellion of his son Absalom. And we find the historical account of this in 2 Samuel chapter 15. There we have a view of this awful experience for David. 2 Samuel 15 verse 30, But David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered and he was barefoot. All the people with him covered their heads too and were weeping as they went up. David found out that his son rebelled against him to steal the throne, the throne of his own father. 
And he made the unhappy discovery that many of the people that he trusted, his friends and court officials, conspired with him. He could trust no one. In spite of David's relationship with God, especially concerning the promises of God that God made to him as the anointed king of Israel, David's world collapsed around him. How did he deal with this? Well, the summary of how he dealt with this is Psalm 62, providing us a lesson and an example to follow. You know, oftentimes, the most eloquent prayers are offered to our Heavenly Father are prayers that no one can hear. They're prayers in silence. And during this terrible time, David found courage by simply, silently reflecting on who God is. Only God can give a person rest. Deliverance can only come from God. God is my rock, therefore only God is dependable. He cannot be moved. He alone is my defense. Only God offers shelter and protection. There were probably those close to David who urged him to fight against his son, to stand his ground, for he was God's anointed king. But as we know the story, David escapes Jerusalem by night, beginning a two-year flight from his son Absalom. It seemed that David was a defeated man, defeated by his own son. But this was no defeat. This was no defeat because it was a test of faith. In verse 3 of this psalm, we see the resolve of David. As David says, how long will you assail a man that you may murder him? All of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence. You think I'm a leaning wall or a tottering fence, ready to collapse at any moment. Think again, you murderous liars. God is my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. The question, how long? is not a sad complaint. It's not a longing for a bad situation to change. Rather, it was a challenge to these ungodly rebels. David is calling them out. Cease and desist because you will not prevail. My soul waits in silence for God only. From him is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be greatly shaken. Those who have set themselves against God and the people of God speak evil and cause great trouble. Things can quickly become personal, and it was very personal with David. In fact, David is described, describing in verse 4 a specific person by the name of Shimei. The scriptures tell us they have counseled only to thrust him down from his high position. They delight in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. Shimei was such a man. While David was on, sat on the throne, he was David's friend, a loyal supporter. But now with Absalom on the throne and David fleeing for his life, Shimei felt that he could say what he really thought about King David. As King David approached Bahram, a man from the same clan as Saul's family came out from there. His name was Shimei, son of Gera, and he cursed as he came out. He pelted David and all the king's officials with stones, though all the troops and special guard were on David's right and left. As he cursed, Shimei said, Get out, get out, you murderer, you scoundrel. The Lord has repaid you for the blood you shed in the household of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has given your kingdom to the hands of your son Absalom. You have come to ruin because you are a murderer. One of David's 
few remaining friends, Abishai, advised David to kill Shimei on the spot. But David understood that God was permitting these things to happen to him. And David said, what does this have to do with you, you sons of Zerah? If he is cursing because the Lord said to him, curse David, who can ask why, should, why do you do this? David when said to Abishai and his officials, my son, my own flesh and blood is trying to kill me. How much more then? This Benjamite, leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. And it may be the Lord will look up upon my misery and restore to me his covenant blessing instead of his curse today. So David and all his men continued along the road while Shimei was going along the hillside opposite them, cursing as he went, throwing stones at him and showering him with dirt. As we continue to endure this COVID-19 pandemic, you feel like God is punishing you? You feel like life is punishing you? Now that the first wave of incentive and unemployment support has vanished, what does one do? Why is this happening? Many people are hurting, even those who have not acquired the virus. As a Christian, do you believe that we're exposed to God's divine wrath? Is this a warning from God for our nation and for the world that judgment is coming? Is God saying to us, repent, repent, repent? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. There is a lesson in Psalm 62 for all of us today. David realized that God allows enemies and hard circumstances, a place in our lives for the purpose of testing us in order that our faith would be strengthened. In times like this, are we truly trusting in God? No matter how much our faith is tested, look within yourself. Do some self-examination. Are you trusting God in spite of your stress and troubles? David began the second section of Psalm 62 in a similar fashion to the first. Psalm 62, 1, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. And then in verse 5, the second section, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. Instead of salvation in verse 1, we find hope in verse 5. God protects his children. God defends those who belong to him. And when circumstances are at their worst, when all seems to be lost, can we say with David, my soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from him. No wonder David said, I will not be shaken. In spite of the, desire, the dire circumstances, he always expected God to do what was best for David. His faith was in God, not in anything or anyone else. During this escape from his capital, fleeing barefoot, crying, weeping, others with him weeping. Zadok, the high priest, decided to go with David. He was faithful to David and brought with him the Ark of the Covenant, the symbol of the presence of God 
with the nation of Israel. But David stopped Zadok. And the scriptures tell us in 2 Samuel 15, Now behold, Zadok, who came, and all the Levites with him, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they set down the Ark of the Covenant of God, and Abathar came up until all the people had finished passing from the city. The king said to Zadok, Return the Ark of the God to the city. If I find favor in the sight of the Lord, then he will bring me back again and show me both it and its habitation. But if he should say thus, I have no delight in you, behold, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. That is a statement to me of amazing faith. Here is a man who was completely committed to God. So much so that he would not try to force God's hand. Clinging only to, only to God. David told Zadok that if it was God's will for him to come back and worship before the Ark of the Covenant, then he would come back. But if he was not allowed to do so, then he was willing to accept the will of God for his life. He was in God's hands. He refused to attempt to force God to do anything. God would lead him regardless of the troubles down the road. And there's another amazing thing about Psalm 62. There's no prayer recorded. No prayer at all. There's certainly an atmosphere of prayer, but we find no worded request. We see David leaving Jerusalem barefoot and weeping, but these things fade away as we look into his heart. He was a man committed to his God, and regardless of the outcome, he would remain committed to his God. Other men would have become bitter, but not David. He was saying something here that is tremendous. My soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, and I shall not be shaken. He only is my rock. That is the central truth of this psalm. And that is the central truth of David's life. I know that for many of you and those that you know, friends, family, these are difficult times. And it's hard to understand just why these things are happening. However, I dare say that nothing in our lives today can compare to the difficulty that King David was going through. He was running from his son Absalom who wanted to kill him. David's faith was tested and David's faith triumphed because he waited only upon God. This is not to say that we should be reckless. I believe we should pray for wisdom, do the right things to minimize our exposure to COVID-19, wear the mask in public with social distancing. But as we walk in wisdom, doing the best to protect ourselves, my soul wait only upon God. May the difficulties of our day strengthen our faith. May our test of faith become our triumph of faith to the glory of God. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul was saying in Romans chapter 5? He said, we exult in our tribulation, knowing that tribulation brings out perseverance, and perseverance brings proven character, and proven character, hope, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God is, is 
poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. I'm reminded of the words that Dottie Rambo penned. Thank you for the valley I walk through today. The darker the valley, the more I learn to pray. I found you where the lilies were blooming, by the way, and I thank you for the valley I walk through the day. God knows the difficulty. God knows the trouble that we are in. And, in, and God uses this, manipulates this in our minds and hearts so that we would grow in faith Strengthen it, be strengthened in him and that we would depend upon him in every way. When we come to the New Testament, we can see a statement by our, by our Lord that is a tremendous statement. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 44, he said, Whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whom, uh, whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Absalom had set himself on a path against God by attacking his father David, God's anointed king of Israel. And though it would take two years, Absalom was broken and King David was restored to his capital. And just as there was a payday someday for Absalom, the time of accountability will come for every man and woman on earth. There is coming a day when every one of us will stand before Christ in judgment. Who is he that condemns, Paul asked? It is Christ who was crucified. Christ is that stone. Today, you and I as believers fall on him, and those who fall on him will find salvation. But for those who wait, leaving this world unsaved, it will fall on them and they will be crushed. And this brings us to the last section of Psalm 62. You know, we, we naively look at high-born people, as David said, people who seem to be successful in every way, and we envy them. But in David's experience, these high-born people the shakers and movers of King David's court promised much but delivered little. People that he thought he could depend upon betrayed him. And this proved to be his greatest disappointment. Man, even the greatest of men, is always found wanting. But our Lord is always faithful, and true. David said in this last section, one thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong, and that you, O Lord, are loving. God said one thing, but David heard two things. But these are not two separate things. The one is God's power. The other is God's love. God's power and love always work in tandem together to accomplish his divine purpose in our lives. The power to make things right in David's life rested in God, not in David. David had no power to bring his son in line and re to repair the damage that Absalom did to Israel. But God had that power, and God would use that power in the right way to make it happen, happen because God is not only strong, but he's also loving. 
strength and mercy belong to our God. He never acts rashly or harshly. Both the godly and the ungodly will get what they deserve. As the scriptures tell us, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward every man according to his works. And remember the Apostle Paul talking about a man named Alexander the coppersmith that had did him much evil. He said the Lord reward him according to his works. And this begins at the foot of the cross. Whether you believe or believe not for whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they've not believed in the name of God's one and only son behold now is the day of salvation now is accepted time if you do not know Jesus as your savior it is my prayer that you realize that Jesus is calling you to salvation. And there are many in this congregation that are praying that you respond to Jesus and his call to salvation. If you've not accepted Christ, you cannot say, only my soul finds rest in God. You cannot say only he is my rock and my salvation. He only is my fortress. If you don't know Jesus, you cannot say find rest in God only. You're not able to claim these promises unless you've been born again, a child of God. And when Nicodemus asked Jesus the question, how can a man be born the second time? The answer to that question is one of the most popular verses in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Salvation is the work of God by the convicting Holy Spirit in the Word of God as God. Christian men and women verbally share the gospel of Christ. You've heard the gospel message. It's my prayer that you humble yourself by faith. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in the historical fact that Christ is raised from the dead. And right now, humble your heart, bow your head, and ask the Lord to save you. The promise is clear. You shall be saved. Stand with me while we sing. Brother Darrell.